game. Lulu being taken away. Peke actually banning that one out from their side. Generally is their main champion. Don't forget, let's not discount Kha'Zix. That's been a champion that Medios and High have played to very good success. I think Fnatic's looking for the LeBlanc first pick again. Worked well on that for them last game. There's no reason Cloud9 um, is going to be able to take that off them because Fnatic almost has a guaranteed first pick on that. Um, Lulu's banned out. Conventional counter against LeBlanc. So Fnatic, instead of banning LeBlanc and, or, or just picking Lulu straight up and then just uh, letting C9 have LeBlanc, they still want that counter out. Okay, and I'm wrong. And they're banning both of them out, so they're going for something else. Because usually, people would pick Lulu and then uh, make sure the other person can't pick LeBlanc anymore and they get countered. So it was a little weird, but maybe Fnatic was so confident in their LeBlanc ability, but clearly I'm mistaken here. Both of them are out. Caitlyn's up. Um, I'm not sure what they're doing here. At least potential first pick here if he doesn't get banned out. Yeah, I think that's I think that's the, actually the correct call, because at least hasn't been banned out yet. And if they miss that, is there a Shivana only and then Balsas to counter because Renekton's out as well? At least it's banned out, as you said, so that's a good call. What do they reply with? Do they reply with, do they go with that mid laner? Do they select that one first? Maybe a Gragas, maybe an Elise. We've seen Soas playing Gragas in that top lane, let's not forget. Gragas, early pick could be good, but I'm, I'm, maybe a Shivana, because Renekton, Renekton is gone. What does the balls really play into it? Maybe a Trundle, but so far only Renekton and Shivana has been played for almost all of the top laners in this entire tournament. And we saw that Trundle was in fact banned by Cloud9 in that last game as well, so maybe showing that they don't want that Trunnel to go the way of Fnatic. We can see Soaz there on your screen and looking very tense. And actually, they're going to go the route of the AD carry, first of all. Caitlyn banning game number one, going to be available for Reckless this time. A bit surprising, actually. Just, just, yeah, sorry to interrupt you there, but the, the, the focus of these AD carries, Fnatic wants Caitlyn mm. when it's open. Cloud9? Siver. Siver. Yeah. It's a, it's a little different in playstyle. Maybe it fits in better with, with his, like, Reckles. Okay, you go to that lane. Almost double lift esque Well, preseason double lift. Uh, just farm on your own. And then Cloud9 wants, no, we want this team utility. We want to roam around the map and just be quick about it. Well, we talked about that Shivana being in there. I expect to see maybe a Trundle coming out from Soas. I know Soas absolutely detests this current meta for himself. It's <laughs> not something imagine. that suits him as a player. He does not like those tankiest players. Yet he actually plays them well. Once he actually gets, you know, once he's browbeaten into saying you will play this tanky champion. Just like Shen in the day. He does well, yeah. Yeah, and then plays his Blitzcrank top. So now, Yellow Side, if you want us to play Shen, you're going to play you're yourself. Gonna play Shen. I'll play support this game, no worries. Ah, uh, but they've got Caitlyn in there already. What are they going to go with? Pantheon, as we said, didn't have the biggest of impacts in the early game of that last one, but with Wukong as well. Uh, no, that's that would be a little up. iffy. Yeah. I, I like the way they react with the Shivana pick and a Gragas. I mean, Gragas is good in both roles for Fnatic, although they haven't been doing too well with double AP, but Gragas is a solid mid-early pick. Pekka likes to pick mid-early, so that's one out of the question. Shivana pickup is really solid. I think that's, that's definitely the best pick they could do there. They counter with Wukong and Nidalee. That's a very, very weak 1-6 Wukong jungle. Uh, not notorious for ganking too well. I mean, he can get a gank off. Anybody can get a gank off, but so far we've seen a lot of Wukongs play passive. Um, however, Sinat has been on top of his game uh, when it comes to game reading and doing the right thing at the right time. So um, maybe he can surprise us with the Wukong. Are they moving into the poke -esque game style here? Yeah, Caitlyn built over and of course the Ace in the Holes to keep them low. Spears coming through. It's something we've seen Fnatic doing. It's something we've seen a lot of in the European LCS. So maybe they're going to be taking a page. They're going to leaf from that book. We'll see how it works and see how Cloud9. They're going to see it immediately. Then they know what's coming. And it's always we've always said it multiple times. If you take a poke comp, you have to get the elite early. And this is dangerous play, as you mentioned, that against Cloud9. This is going to be really tricky to like, complete this composition. The, the element of the poke comp also shows in Wukong, because whenever you poke, people are going to want to hard engage on you. Defensive and then, spin, yeah. yeah then, then Wukong can just counter engage and start spinning and just knock people up. Um, there is a Yasuo technically for the for the Chinese with Yasuo uh, Wukong combo, but I don't think Nidalee fits in there at all. Um, Zyra is another great component to a Pokemon, pokes relatively well and has an amazing disengage, so they have these two AoE abilities that counter engage, but will they not lack the damage is what I wonder uh, once this Kha'Zix jumps in with a Black Shield on top of him and then Fnatic themselves get spread out by an explosive cask. On top of that, uh, you have the Shivana scaling into the late game. Will they not just get overrun is my question. Well, it looks like they are going to be going with a possible Zyra support once again and Trundle for that top lane for Soaz up against Balls of Siobhan. And we said it before, Trundle banned in game number one. Soaz going to get it this time around. We'll see how that all impacts. It's an AD carry that's left here for Cloud9 and 
really unsurprisingly going in for Siva. Yeah, yeah. It, it was their first pick in the last game. It was pretty obvious that that was going to be coming out for them. And I actually personally think Cloud9 have got a very good comp here. Of course, Fnatic with those spears, if they land, causes problems. But Cloud9 are pretty solid. I mean, when I play poker compositions, or whenever I play, say, Morgana support, and I'm trying to land those bindings, I really like what Tunnel brings to the table. Disengage in the pillar as well. So we have three disengages from Fnatic, as well as offensive pillars make it really easy for Nidalee to hit Spears because they yeah. block off one exit, and either you run into my team or you run away to your team, and you will undoubtedly get hit by one of these Spears. If, however, Peke falls behind, as you said, like, it's over. There's no way they're going to call back into the game because they need a lot of spears to come back and they'll just get punished. Look at the mobility coming out of Cloud9. Shivana roams around the map really easily. Kha'Zix jumps around. This explosive cask is good. And Sivir just completes that picture. Um, the only issue might be the laning phase. I can see uh, Fnatic having an edge because they're actually used to playing against the Morgana. And you said if Peke falls behind, then it's not going to be good times for Fnatic. And you also said that level one to six for Wukong, we know it already. Whilst he, well, whilst anyone can gank, he's not really got anything to lock someone, especially someone so mobile like Gregus down. So uh, probably not going to be any kind of kill potential in that mid lane for Fnatic from the get-go. You say that with Wukong, but in fairness, no, there's Kha'Zix. I mean, both junglers are very similar in their style. They're going to be dashing in. They've both got gap closers. They've both got a quick burst when they get in that close. The difference is, of course, the ultimates and Wukong's ultimate. If catching people out, it will cause problems. And suddenly, if, you know, K Reckless is given free farm onto someone being bounced up by the Cyclone, he is going to do damage. I'm, this is definitely an interesting one. This is a Fnatic comp we've seen a lot of in the European LCS. So, so Cloud9 will have seen this. They will have researched this. If any team coming into a tournament is more prepared than in the US, I don't know who it is. TSM often arguably do not research as much. Cloud9 will have researched the crap out of Fnatic coming into this game. They knew exactly what they're up against. They knew this book. Lemonation's got his book of tactics. And I'm pretty but we sure... we don't know what is in the Majestic in Book there. of Lemonation. Well, we do not know what is in there. Maybe it's just drawings that he likes to look at before the game. Keep himself happy. Well, so I was biting down into balls and having a bit of a dance in that top side of the river as well. <laughs> Cloud9 actually uh, did go down towards the bottom side there. Just have a bit of a peek through by that tri-bush, but they're going to set things up by the death brush and probably just wait until those warding totems come out and get a couple of wards down. Standard level one. Yeah. This is actually something that's been de developing a lot in the NA scene. Uh, people want a three-man invade uh, at one point to ward the enemy buff. People have been doing leashless invades, which means you have no idea does the jungler start red or blue. So you go in and place a ward on one of his buffs. Either you see him or you don't, but you have the information where he starts, what his second buff is going to be, and where he's going to show up. Probably for his initial lane gank, either top or mid or mid and bottom. So you have all the information coming out as one early ward, and that's something that pro teams have been developing. I can already see, see we see it right there, that ward drops. I can see teams starting to group in the little brush ahead of that with four mana and say, okay, you want to ward my buff? Come ward it, but we'll be waiting. Nice. Oh, so I'm spotting out that ward on the top side. And Cloud9 backing off in towards their red buff. So that's going to be a start for them. Over the other side, Fnatic starting on the top side of their jungle as well. Cyanide will have his blue buff before anything else. Well, let's talk about these lanes and that top lane this time around. So as on Trunnel versus Balls on Shivana again. Well, I mean, it's a, it's a standard lane. We've actually seen it quite a lot during the LCS. It's one of those champions and so as it, it was the first champion he played in the European LCS in the spring split at Trundle. He actually picked it up from Cloud9's European team, ironically, so he managed to take it from them. So it's using a stolen tactic against their sister team. Not too big of a fan of Morgana starting uh, a bind here. I think if he starts pool and Sivir starts W, they push so quickly that the Fnatic can almost come at that wave. If they go straight 2v2 um, and they hide well behind their minions, then Fnatic is probably going to win that push war and, and especially win the poke and punish Cloud9 a little harder. I think he actually taking quite a lot of damage here as well at level one. He built over Peacemakers being thrown around the side and we can see a Fnatic pushing hard to grasp that level two before Cloud9 get there. And are we going to see the grasping roots coming out? No, nope, because the plants are in there. And that will be no action for now, at least down on the bottom side. We actually do see the uh, junglers both on the bottom side of their jungle now as well. Interesting thing, you can spawn plants and hide behind them to dodge the bindings. Oh, we are waiting. Peke did take a lot of damage in that mid lane at the start there, but he's managed to heal himself back up. And this bottom lane pair and Glamination throwing out a couple of those bindings. Not really getting very close to landing. So maybe feeling a little bit of nerves there in a game. 
Well, yellow stuff, fair enough. He did sidestep and dodge that one. But Fnatic uh, keeping the pressure and starting it off. And that even that tormented soul, he needs to land that with that spell shield because immediately spe uh, the spell team's head, sorry, gives him that gold. Every single tick on that spell tormented soul. That's why he's trying to land it. But Fnatic immediately knew what they were doing and stepped straight well away from it. Well, down there, 19 or 20 CS to 10 at the moment. Good for Reckless, got that range advantage over Cloud9. So, see how that one all works out. Meanwhile, in the mid lane, 15 to 20 CS. It's high that's got the early advantage on that side of things. Meteor's actually coming around the side here. Cyanide will be doing Wolves as the ward does go over there. So, Meteor's just seen that those Wolves have gone down. So, he knows that Cyanide is on the top side of the jungle. Interesting, he wants to fancy this one. He's actually a level behind, but he comes in, doesn't get it, the smite from Cyanide being used. I tell you, that wasn't a smite. Yes, it was. The cooldown's just reset itself. Just started off, so... Like Meteos actually is behind Cyanide right now in the This farm. is something Meteos does a lot. Uh, he clears the full jungle and then goes to into the enemy's uh, camp and just ward one. Again, he will predict where the, champion, uh, where the enemy jungler is. Does he do that camp? He's nearby. Is he not doing the camp? He's at the other side of the map. And he tries to counter jungle. Unfortunately, he ran into the King of Smites and Cyanide took that away. <laughs> King of Smites. He didn't smite it. I was just trying to look at the timer. It is just uh, come off cooldown. Cyanide knew Meteos would miss smite that and got it anyways. <laughs> That's the King of Smites exactly. for you. Good way around it. That's right. <laughs> So, the bottom lane, we did just see a little bit of a transition between them. Reckless actually has pretty damn good farm over Sneaky right now. Does have a range advantage, of course. I think Siva's only, what, 500, and Caitlyn's like 550 or 575 or something like that. Yellowstar, Grasping Roots coming out. Sneaky got a lot of damage on him. Ignite goes down, but Reckless was not close enough to capitalize on that one. If they can push his wave up and get close enough with that Piltover, which is what he might do, Maven Fancy taking a tower hit, then he is going to back away further behind the turret. So some people wonder why would Yellowstar shoot his, uh, his snare behind behind Sneaky instead of just straight at him. Uh, two reasons, one spell shield can block it, and if you ban if you spawn the plants behind him, he's forced to run around them and constantly get slowed. He popped the spell shield with his Q as well, and he just ignited and he forced Sneaky out of lane there, and that's well played, well hidden by Yellowstar, and it just puts the pressure on. Even if they don't get that kill, they're pressuring the turret. Because that's good, because they have to release some pressure of the other lanes, because Shivana is pushing out on top, and High is really showing Pekka how, how well Gragas does against Nidalee, because earlier today, I think Pekka was tie farming Gragas into the Nidalee matchup, and High seems to be a little more aware how to punish early on this on this matchup, because he already forced Pekka to base, and look at him, he's half and half off mana full HP. Well, good job there at the moment in that mid lane, keeping the pressure on, keeping the farm on, and he is having a good advantage, but... There's a bigger advantage growing in that bottom lane. Vampire Acceptor was just picked up by Reckless, and he is starting to dominate that lane in terms of farm. And probably going to keep going at this rate as well. Got himself boots in from that. Sneaky now getting some time on his own as Reckless did decide to go back. But as soon as he comes back into lane, I don't think Sneaky can really stand and bang and see. Good spell shield to avoid the damage coming out of that Piltover Peacemaker. We also see Morgana headed back down towards his bottom. He's got Meteos in tow as well. Yeah, I think they realize they need some help out here. It's starting to snowball pretty heavily against them and they actually may well be able to get around. Ward on the tri-bush, Meteor sneaking himself in there. They've realized the danger. They're going to back away. Grasping root cats on Nemination. Meteos is in there. Yellowstar's going to be the focus. Does flash away. Dark Pointed does not land, but the Boomerang Blade does. And Sneaky does good damage onto Yellowstar. So reckless there, just pushing things out forward once again. You see the instant response there from Miller. So, okay, we need a ward in the tri bush then, if that's what they're going to go for. It's a good dart binding on towards Reckless. Going to give Sneaky a bit more time to get things farmed back up. We can see that Kazik's actually on the minimap there, just doing the white at this point. So, will they move in towards that one? No, a ward down on towards Blue Buff. So, Fnatic might want to challenge here on his second spot. There they are going in towards High. He gets knocked up by the Cyclone. Rooted in as well. Throws down the barrel. High is still alive. Can they actually chase in for this one? Nidalee going to go in. Flashes are going to be used. And the spear missed. Well, he's not getting away from that. Auto attack from Peke. First blood Fnatic. So, as I was saying, how bad of a jungler, or not as good of a jungler, 1 to 6 Wukong is, if he lands at ultimate on level 6, Including in a pincer move, this allows Fnatic to capitalize so much they could have gone for Drake. They went for a little bit of a, a tower push here. Earlier though, I want to commend Yellowstar on his vision control. That pink ward is really solid. And this play, they didn't get tower, they didn't get dragon, but they're just stealing the red buff off the back of that one. Yeah, they're stealing it away from Meteos. Having to defend out that mid lane, obviously getting the experience and the gold from those minions. And has evolved his wings as his first level 6. But 
That Cyclone working wonders for Cyanide. They did actually burn a Flash Cyanide. Didn't want to take the last hit. They had to give that one across to Peke, and that's why the basic attacks, that's why he didn't use his ability to finish that one out. Reckless, well, that Dark Binding not even close to landing. Medios countering quickly here, going straight for the red buff of Cyanide. Yeah, I really like that reaction. Your red buff's gone. He probably still has to base. Uh, they're not in a position to punish you really hard. Try and get that red buff. Save your smite because Zyra's looking to steal. Uh, coming in from the side, Meteos was able to get that one as Peke comes around the side. Meteos just dodging out of the way of that spear. And actually, he did put a trap down in towards that death push there. So they know there's a pink ward inside of that one. We can see in this bottom lane as we focus on that, that Sneaky's done a good job to actually bring his CS almost even by now. If yeah. you have to point out to the supports, I mean, this is my like forte. Uh, people always forget the supports, yes. We and, never and forget the supports. Yes, you Grapo. do. The Morgana is out farming Zyra right now by six, and that, that's all more than 100%. D, so Lemon Nation has the All Stars number. Well, I mean, if you actually counter the two numbers together, which yeah, is yeah. what we tend to do <laughs> as uh, commentators, we tend to look at how the whole lane uh -huh. is going. And actually, it's a big advantage, and it's working well for them. So at the moment, it's 72 to 72. And that's pretty much equal. Pretty much there. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, we're going on a tangent here. I really like though, look at those pink wards. Both teams are investing in correctly placed pink wards. They've been alive for quite a while. Uh, I think Cloud9 just lost one of them, but that pink ward placed by Yellowstar earlier uh, is really well played. Now, here's High moving up towards that top lane because Peke has already moved across the Spear doesn't land and they're going to die towards Balls. He does have his ultimate available. Here comes High from the side. Good damage down towards Soas who flashes away. The barrel going to knock him back to safety and Peke is already in Cougar form. You're not going to be able to catch up with that. Yeah, he barely made it out of that one alive and this allows them to push down the top tower. Well, we'll see whether that top tower does go down. They are going to fetch up Peke. I think it may well do. Peke is going to try and harass with those spears from long range. We'll see if it does manage to work out for them. No, he does clear it out, so that tower is safe. And both junglers actually did a job in that mid lane. You can see cyanide has been the defensive force in there. And he's actually pressuring quite a big wave in towards that tower, but we're going to see high. He's going to come back, and those barrels will clear that out quickly. And that's really good for junglers like Wukong. They like picking up a, a little bit of farm once in a while. He did the second time. A sign has been farming up that mid lane uh, earlier, XPK base. So they're definitely spreading out their resources well. Same for Kha'Zix, does well with some of the lane farms and uh, just fits Medios' style pretty well as well. Oh, balls. Catching another spear there. Peke is actually tanking up the turret there. Not exactly what he would have wanted to do. And I'm not sure if he's going to get any actual damage on that one. May change things out now as he throws another spear on towards Balls. He was already recalling from the safety. Oh. Perceived safety there of the back of that turret. Meanwhile, Cyan has snuck down towards bottom. Well, that was the Dark Shield already used there. Black Shield, even a bit of mix of both. You never know. <laughs> it did take through throughout the Dark Binding as well, but we saw Peke in that top lane, and the reason he was taking those tower hits, he wanted to save the minions health. He wanted to get that wave up there, and he countered it so well alongside Soas, and they now have taken that top tower first. Indeed, that's Fnatic again being aware of where the enemy team is. Sure, Peke looks like he's tanking that tower, and at first glance, I agree, it looks stupid. But we're going in a bot lane. Oh, Lemon Nation, not going to escape this one. I'm afraid Reckless is going to pick up that kill, and Cyanide played things very, very patiently, waiting quite a while in that bot lane. Pays off for Fnatic. Meteos may be trying to make a play in towards Soaz in that top lane. He's actually going to try and counter in to start with. He's coming around the back on towards Peke in that mid lane. We'll get to look at it eventually. There it is. Peke is going to try and jump away from this one. Where's he going to go? The damage is coming out. It's too much. And that explosive cast, well, it didn't do the knockback. It did the damage on the edge of it. And Meteos gets himself the kill. A good pickup. Both teams reacting pretty well to what's going on around the map. But Sina in the right place at the right time again, gets that kill, forces them out later, leads to a turret. Yeah, sure, Pekka got caught, but Fnatic is still getting on top of this game, and I really like what they're doing with their positioning and how well aware they are where the enemy team is, because that's leading to tower after tower after tower, except that one time in mid. Speaking of towers, the inner to uh, sorry, the outer turret for Fnatic is being pressured here by High Meteor. They're going to take that one out. I haven't already picked off Peke there. No one left around to defend it. Lemination actually basically dragged the minions into that brush with him there. So they've got plenty of vision of him. But here is the next objective. Dragon is up. Cloud9 moving around the side. But are Fnatic ready for this one? Well, with the explosive cast down for Hyde, it's going to be a problem. Of course, those spears can come rattling through and land. Jungler is nearby. Dark Binding gets sidestepped there. Lemonation doesn't land that one. And now they're actually trying to get some damage poked onto Peke so he can't get involved. And Cloud9 
wisely choose not to go for that dragon. You have to look at the compositions though. Fnatic's one is a lot slower to play, especially around objective than Clan 9. All Clan 9 is one binding and they can go in. However, Fnatic has poke and a lot of poke added up to each other will bring people really low. Lamination gets caught, but still it's calculated. You know, he knows he's not going to die there, but he gets poked out. Compare that to, to C9's composition. Land one binding, Sibrolti pops and they will go all in and drag it, get that kill. So basically polar opposites. They need to be played differently, but both teams are playing their compositions well. See how these two turn managed to tank themselves out. Big Water Cut is both being used out. And well, both ultimates were used there. A fairly even trade. It was so as you could argue that came out on top. He was waiting for that Dragon's Descent to be used. There's the spears coming by from Beke. Dragon taking down half hit points. And they will step themselves away. You do see that Soas has the teleport as well in this game, so he can drop down towards that dragon. I'm not sure that I've seen Peke actually land many spears this one, apart from that push onto balls a little bit earlier on. And speaking of balls, he's just taken the blue buff off Fnatic, but Fnatic looking to reply to that where they pick up off their third turret here, the final one left remaining on the outer circle for Cloud9. So if you're looking at Siege, Caitlyn is your pick you want to have. Long range, gets traps up, combine that with Zyra, disengage and snares her poke. And then the Nidalee heal on top of that. It's really good to just combine that to get the Siege going. And Caitlyn is the prime example of why, of what what you want in Siege comp. Compared to Sivir, has a harder time getting to those towers. But once you land some CC, she can go in and look for the dive. Sivir oh. was left alone all on that bottom lane though, which is a bit of an issue. We don't want to leave Sneaky to get that free farm going. Meteos comes back in. This time around, they are going to start off on that Dragon. And Fnatic are not in a position to respond. So this is Cloud9 taking advantage of their vision, realizing that Fnatic had completely backed away. And didn't want the fight a minute ago because they could take it for free. Yeah, Fnatic needs to poke them down if they ever want to contest objectives. C9 can get in place and do it really quickly because they have the, the frontal fight and they don't need a, as much of a build-up. So they're quicker around the map. However, Fnatic is better at staying far away and just slowly choking the life out of you. Again, polar opposites and it's just Cloud9 is playing the, the strength of the composition right now. They move into an area, quickly take objective, move out. They don't stay around the same place too long and it really works well, uh, especially given that Balls is splitting a lot and is spreading Fnatic out. And if Fnatic is not in numbers, they're suffering a lot more uh, than Cloud9 is because they're a lot more mobile. Something I've noticed with Lemonation is he really does do a lot of traveling around that map. He's picked up those boots of mobility because he is the primary ward man and he really covers a lot of the map just to make sure he gets that one single ward in the right position. Oh, you see the push around on towards Peke. He is going to have to try and pounce away balls. Going to actually dive pretty deep into that one and they jump on. Peke goes down and actually Lemonation may just fall from this one. No, great flash away. Now they go towards Yellow Star. Meteos can't quite finish that one up. Soas comes in. Great dark binding, but Cyanide is there as well. Doesn't have his ultimate available. They lock up balls. Can they finish him off? Soas going on towards Lemonation. Balls goes down. Meteos is in there. Soas did get the kill. Meanwhile, Greg has finished off Caitlyn and there is a push towards the middle. High can't quite tank that one up. Soas is going to have to back away as well. Back and forth action there and that all developed from well as I mentioned Lemonation going deep to get some of those ward placements and those ward placements paying dividends getting themselves multiple kills and potentially this middle turret. Peke is back though. Spear lands on towards high. He can't take too much tower damage but they did importantly lock down Reckless. He was trying to rotate down there and Sneaky and High managed to lock him down and get themselves the kill. So we see how well Fnatic plays in these uh, lot of skirmishes where people get caught out. Okay, Fnatic tried to join in with Reckless, but this time Cloud9 was collapsing with all of their members and this time they catch out Reckless and that was not happening last game. Balls was split and look at Sneaky, aggressive Severalty chasing him down. He knows he can beat them because he has the backup of High and Reckless can never stand there to fight. That was still a close engagement despite the fact they flashed and High's ultimate on towards Reckless, it shows the damage Reckless actually has this early on. I just like how well Fnatic plays these fights though, going in and out. I want to give props to Sina the way he got that kill. He went out, decoy baited, jumped back in, got the kill, and he knows he dies to Kazuk, so he flashes out immediately. He respects the all-in from the enemy team, but picks up one kill and gets out. In the meanwhile, Soas picked up a kill somewhere else. If Cloud9 was playing the same four-man split and one on the bottom style and does not collapse with these fights, they would be in the same position last game, but you see, they've learned from their mistakes. You see there, Soas in that top lane, Blade of the Rune King actually for both of them in their balls. They picked that one up a little bit earlier on as well. Spectre's Cowl actually for Soas on top of that one as Peke going to come across the side again, throwing those spears out, trying to catch Hyde, trying to do as much damage as he can, wherever he can. And needs it really. A couple of CS behind at this stage of the game as well. I want to ask you, Crapo, we talked about it at the start, how the Pope comp really needs to be ahead in that lane phase. They're not. This is 
what, 200 goal differential between the two. Is this playing massively into Cloud9's favor now? I wouldn't say massively because they, they're still trying to out-rotate them. They haven't been locking or going for Baron objectives. Um, they're getting ahead though. I feel I feel Cloud9 has a small lead, but you can never expect uh, Peke is still farming. And if he lands a couple of spears in a row, the tide turns. Reckles, you saw, he got uh, sneaky pretty low, even, he, even though he was chased by Agragas at the same time. If Hai somehow messes up one of his explosive casks, or Fnatic baits Cloud9 in again like they did last game, walking back with all that disengaged, the tides can turn really quickly. So now, I'm giving it to Cloud9, uh, but Fnatic definitely has an out in this game. Not, nothing is certain, and Cloud9 has a small, albeit somewhat decisive edge if they play it correctly. And Ferranti need to start landing some of those spears. Once they start landing, then they can carve more openings for themselves across the map. And was high just pushing out on that bottom lane. In terms of turrets, 3 to 2 is the scoreline. The top outer turret for Fnatic is actually the only outer turret left standing in this game. Easy pickings almost for Cloud9 if they rotate up there. Yeah, I wonder what uh, Reckless is going to do now in terms of his build. If he picks up Lost Whisper, it's it's troll back to the to the Legolas build where he just goes fully for the armor pen and then he tries to snipe down the, these lower HP targets of Cloud9. But I, I don't see that he needs to because nobody, but nobody. Well, I mean, there's Ninja Tabby. That's that's literally the defense, and of course the ultimate that Shivana will pop out there. But other than that, there's really no defensive stats. What I'm wondering though, with the Pokemon, you generally need great vision and. You, Cloud9 are already realizing this. They're taking it away from them. They are removing that vision. Fnatic, though, they're trying to push up the mid lane here. Cloud9 were actually trying to rotate to put pressure on towards that top lane of Soaz, but look how fast Fnatic have responded to shove that mid. If Fnatic can lock them up, that's where you want to be. If Pokemon wants to lock five people under a turret, keep them there with vision and continuously poke them. The reason Reckles would go for a Lost Whisper is so it's ace in a hole on one of these key targets, right. Sivir, High, or Meteos, would drop them to half HP, and that would instigate, or that would allow Fnatic to play a little more aggressive. In a long drawn out fight, he does not want to have the Lost Reaper, as you said, because the armor doesn't warrant it just yet. So he has a bit of a of a catch-22. Do I go for the poke with it, or do I go for the follow-up fight? The zeal, it seems. So it appears you were right. Well, we'll see whether it's the Static Shiv, or whether it's the Phantom Dancer, or what he's going to go with on that one. Static Shiv probably is the choice he'll go towards, but as of right now, Cloud9 have themselves a small advantage, and this is the first advantage they've really had over Fnatic in the semi-final so far. And I really like how they're mobile and they're preventing themselves from being locked up under this tower. They're not getting siege, they're playing their map right, putting vision across, and then they're going for these spread out objectives like a Drake. It's really hard to lock people around a Drake area when you're playing against such a mobile comp where with Sivir and Gragas and Kha'Zix and even Shivana. All of that turn, like, plays into their favor. Well, that dragon down to less than half HP. We see the spears come flashing by. The first one actually did connect there, but it is going to be the dragon taken here by Cloud9. And there's the ultimate pops out of Sneaky. They're going to go on towards Yellow Star. Reckless could be in trouble here as well. Yellow Star surely going to fall to balls. And Reckless is in between two very, very damaging targets. Well, Soaz goes to the front. High flashes away. They turn right back on towards Soaz. Ultimate was used as Reckless does kill High. We see Meek just getting onto the killing spree. Sneaky. Actually, getting himself the double kill there by finishing off X Peke. And this is the big difference. Cloud9 with that all in comp, the poke comp of Fnatic just completely being obliterated. Once they turned on them, they had no way to disengage. Cyanide was not in position to get that cyclone going down, and Cloud9 take themselves a dragon and a tower. Exactly. This is what, the, what we were pointing out earlier in the game as well. Fnatic has a lot of disengage, but it wasn't enough. The Zyra ulti knocked some people up. Wukong went in, but they were too split. And this is the C9 flipping that switch is saying, okay, we're going in and we're never, ever turning back. Balls is so tanky right now that he can just jump on the 80 carries and Reckless has to run. He can't fight him, so he's essentially zoned. He's busy. People will try to help Reckless. In the meanwhile, Medios is jumping around, killing people and getting resets. Sure, they killed they killed Gragas, but really look at this. In the, immediately, the Saber ulti comes out. Balls jumps in. He doesn't care. Even if Yellowstar knocks up his team behind him, he keeps going. Finishes the support. Cyanide does the... Okay, ID trying to get in with the Cyclone, but Soas comes in way too late. Nice flash by Hyde. This keeps Reckles in turn busy on the side as well. And, and just Cloud9 is in the middle of the pack, picking up the right targets and not chasing too far anymore. Oh, What's a spear? Yeah. yeah, a spear right at the end there. I think would have finished off Sneaky if that were to connect. Didn't happen for them though. It's 4,000 gold that Cloud9 currently lead over Fnatic and they need it here of course if you are only just joining us. This is a best of three for the semi-final and Fnatic lead 1-0 to zero after a good win in game number one. But 
So far, it's looking like Cloud9, if they can keep executing these team fights, that may just have the edge in this one. Yeah, what Fnatic really needs to look for is be grouped up a little more, get a good Zyra ulti to zone people off. If Balls does that again, where he jumps over the Zyra ulti and his team is still zoned behind him, we need the throttle ulti on Balls and we need to kill him. Kill him before that ulti wears off, or if he doesn't, if that doesn't happen, we need Wukong jumping in, stall them with his ulti, kill Balls, and then we'll start looking at the rest of the team. Unless, of course, you get a really good catch on Gragas or Medias. But I really like the way C9 is playing these fights. Uh, they're going a lot smarter about it than last game. And Joe mentioned it earlier on. But he needs to start landing those spears. This time around, he does manage to land it on Meteos and on Sneaky. And actually, they're thinking of continuing to put pressure on this one. They realize they've taken two members high. We saw the ace in the hole also going on towards Lemonation. The spears are still rattling through, but it's clearly Cloud9 that are starting to push against them. There is a push back in mid, actually Cloud9 headed off towards the top side. There is the ward. Will be spotted out by that sweeping lens. Actually, a Gragas barrel about to explode in that mid lane as well. Are Fnatic going to be drawn up towards that barren area? Are they going to try and push through even further? Meteos just sidestepping the spear. Actually, they've pushed Fnatic out of position now on this mid lane. Yeah, they're just going to rush straight up that mid lane. It seems he can look at Soaz. He's in that top lane. Hasn't got teleport available. They may actually collapse on towards him. He's got to start packing right now. He's either going to get caught in the top lane or be not be present when they go towards this Baron. And this is a Baron play and it's executed well. You push up mid, mid lane to where the remnants are of the former tower and then you turn back into Baron and then people have to face check not only one but more brushes or if they don't want to face check they push mid. This is a play that Fnatic have done many times though. They know what they go up against and they quickly put the pressure back on towards that inner turret. But Cloud9, they've got around the back side of them. We can see high. Ace in the hole does land. Yellow Star's going to be the Patsy. He goes down. High's going to get dropped low. They can't the get the kill on him though. Mikhail works out for him. Cyanide, is he going to go down to the Ignite? He may well do. Reckless does manage to get the kill on towards Medios, but we already see Yellow Star going down. Cyanide will follow. High has gone down towards Peke. It is a two for two so far, but it's clearly Cloud9 that are chasing. That spear so, so close, but it's coming from behind. And Cloud9 have got to be careful of that one. Yeah, is the end of that one. Cloud9 couldn't chase any further. And Fnatic do get back to a slightly safer position. 7 to 9 is the score here in terms of kills, and Cloud9 still holding out on that gold lead. And we saw Peke was able to pick up the one kill from the side, couldn't quite land any spears onto the men at the back. But he was here again. Yellow Star quite simply all alone there, trying to bait them in. Cyclone was good from Cyanide. Yeah, I really like what they did there. Yellow Star goes in, knows if he tries to escape, he's gonna die anyways. And he just wants to commit onto the Gragas. On this side of the fight, Peke kills one, tries to escape. He's, he can hop over these walls and boss can't after his Dragon Form's already used, so Peke survives that one. Um, I think Yellow Star was in a, in a bit of a bad situation and he made the best out of it. Lured people in, got uh, high really low. Imagine if the Wukong ulti finished off high, this fight could have turned out incredibly different. Um, but Fnatic is playing the same thing, they're, they're being decisive. And you, when you play a composition like this, and you're caught and you think you can't make it out in the line, just fight, and they did that really well. They almost got high down, Pekka got a kill on the side, his spears are starting to hurt. Nothing is over in this game, C9 has the edge, but Fnatic's reacting really well to these Baron baits. They're not playing the, I'm not gonna face take that brush game, they're just gonna go in the mid again, and then force Cloud9 to come back every time. Eventually though, we're gonna see a Baron. Ultimate being used by Meteos, trying to close the gap, he wants to jump on someone, but it's not gonna happen. Not sure whether he's evolved, he has evolved in, I believe, they evolved the R there. Well, that it may well have been his second one. No, he hasn't. He's got the claws. He's got gigantic claws on his animation. It's quite easy to spot. Spear's still not landing. Peke's not able to land these. Doesn't have the vision either, really. And he's not able to get a sight on exactly where he can throw those spears. See, the reason Fnatic didn't face take that bush, and the reason Lemonation or, or everybody thought they were going to face check it, there's, a tight, there's one more ward left in the Baron area, and that's giving Fnatic enough information to roughly know where Cloud9 is. If they're not close by it, they don't have to face check. Oh, they are going to push in for this one. Yellow Star once again is a focus of this fight. Balls dives into the middle. Cyclone going up on towards Meteos. Can they lock him down? Yes, they can. So Earth picks up that kill. Balls is super low here as well. Can they get on towards Lemonation? So close, flashing from Soas. Gets in the double kill. Can they get any more though? Cyanide falls dangerously oh. low. 
think you're chasing him. Gets that one. He's now going to be locked up as the pillar comes down. Spear from Peke as well. And that is a three for two in favor of Fnatic. And damn, Fnatic played that so well. I didn't think that would turn out this like this much of an effect because Fnatic was seemingly going for a straight fight without poking before, but they used their ability so well. And the decode from Cyanide baited in Sneaky completely. Yeah, sure, you had to flash to finish me off, but my team will just kill you in return. And they're trying to take full advantage. You saw Balls, he got away with next to no help. High get next to with no help. It was so close to being an ace. They're probably about to go back to that fountain, and it means they're taking two inner turrets from that single play. That's objective control. And Soaz is becoming really a big monster right now. He steals our resistances, and he can't be killed, and he's really basically killing people, whatever comes close. You see him targets, he's not chasing anyone, he's just killing whatever comes close. And again, Yellowstar, I think, was the only one that died, and he's fulfilling his role of sacrificial Zyrak goat perfectly. <laughs> Who's the T-Rex then? Is that balls? <laughs> it used to be, but it's so was is stealing the like stealing the T-Rex power and it's just going ham <laughs> on everyone. <laughs> no more pink wars put down over by Baron. Oh, man, trying to clear out, but Look at those spears. will catch the spear. Yeah, indeed. The Ravadon Death Cap was finished before that last fight. Another blasting wand added in here. And some nice grasping roots from Yellow Star on towards balls, but what is the next play? Are we going to see this Baron Dance coming in? The spear's flashing over that black shield all well and good, but it can only protect one person, and uh, it's cooldown slightly longer than those other spears. I really like the Fnatic's getting tanky enough on all their core members to uh, to basically protect Pekka and Rekels. Yellowstar, okay, he's not tanky, but he'll sacrifice himself, so that's one. Then Cyanide, he's built a Randoms right now. He's going for some MR right now. So he's getting really tanky, annoying, in your face. Just hit me, don't hit my carries. And then we see what Soaz is doing in these fights. Not only is he really tanky, he's dealing a lot of damage. This allows Reckless to play at the side of the fights and Peke as well. And really, Fnatic turns on these single targets that are overextended really well. And that's the way they're playing these fights and they're playing in damn well. In that singular fight, it seems to have given Cloud9 a little bit of questions about themselves. They are grouping up once again to try and shove down that mid lane, but Fnatic again, slightly out of position. Can they get themselves around in time? It seems that they will. Grasping Roots not going to land from Yellowstar, and so as off on his own in that top lane once again. So now, I don't know what Clown is doing. Are they going for the Baron bait again? Clearly they've been doing it for seven minutes. Hasn't been working. Fnatic always managed to sneak one or two wards in between. And it's just not enough vision. And, and all Fnatic needs is a little bit of vision. And they basically figure out what the rest is doing. And if they know where roughly where Cloud9 is, they don't fish it. Unless they are on Baron and they're 100% sure there, Fnatic will come or push mid. But other than that, they're fine playing the waiting game. Waiting until they land the spear, somebody overextends. And Fnatic is playing is really smart. Thing is, if they land a max range spear now with the items that Peke has got in there, somebody's gonna be going very, very low. We'll see about that one though. Peke has now just pushed out that mid lane. We saw that Soaz was constantly shoving the top lane out there. He also has teleport. Uh, well, he does have teleport. He's currently on cooldown. Uh, so we'll see if he's gonna uh, utilize that once the cooldown is off and push somewhere else on the map. We see Kazix actually is down that bottom lane and Fnatic. They've spotted that, They're going straight towards Baron. Well, they're going to go straight towards it. They did manage to sneak it last time around, of course, when Cloud9 went for that dragon. This time around, it seems the top lane is going to get focused on, and it's finally time for Fnatic to actually make use of this poke up. They want to start sieging this top inhibitor. And this is a really good rotation. They almost faked the Baron, and they start grouping up in top lane. Cloud9 will try to pincer. You see, of course, just coming around the side, High wants to get in there, Ace in the hole being used out, Black Shield did come out for Elimination, as you mentioned that cooldown is quite long and they're going to catch out towards that top lane, Reckless going down, the AD carry drops and Fnatic in trouble, Videos jumps in, oh he was almost destroyed where he stood, but they have managed to get back here down, Cyanide using that Cyclone but it's simply an escape manoeuvre and Fnatic are dropping like flies here, this is almost certainly Cloud9 getting the Baron off the back of this one. And this is Cloud9 really spreading out the damage, baiting out Fnatic and then turning on them in a straight fight. Fnatic needs to land some poke, they need to be in the same area, and they need to back up together and protect each other. If Fnatic gets split, Cloud9 will have the upper hand individually. The entirety of Cloud9 now collapsing in towards that Baron. We only have two men left alive, one of which is Cyanide with a smite available. We can see on the video I'm already recalling. They're gonna go back and Cloud9 pick up the Baron, and that puts them a healthy step ahead of Fnatic See, Cloud9 did the right thing and they focused on the prime carries of Fnatic. They need to get Reckles or Xpeke and this time they got Reckles immediately and 
Fnatic didn't have the, the, the strength anymore to fight that afterwards, and they were trying to get escape or escape or maybe fight again, and they weren't decisive. And Cloud9 just picked it up really well. And this is a problem. If you play this Siege poke composition, you need to get five on lane. You need to lock them up in their base. The second they can come around you and start pincering you, you need to just back out all the way and push them back in front of you. If they get behind you, you have a hard time playing this poke composition. And they seem a little bit flustered because Bowles and Meteos are just jumping straight on Reckless. And when High came around that backside, they just didn't know really what to do. Dragon up in 19 seconds. It's going to be Cloud9. They're going to pick that one up. That's going to stretch their gold lead to seven to 8,000. All the lanes are pushing in favor of Cloud9. It's only a matter of time before Cloud9 now turn that pressure in towards inner turrets. Um, they can attack in there pretty quickly as well with Sneaky if they want to go into the tower. Balls is definitely tanking up at this point. Randuin's with the Thorn Nail in there. We see the Dragon made mince meat off. Not really taking that long to finish off the uh, Dragon at that point. What are they going to do next though? Grouping up in middle currently are Cloud9. They only really need to be scared of a spear every now and then coming out there. and Maybe Cyanide decoying in and trying to catch one of them out and get a good ulti off. But I think they're nicely far enough ahead of Fnatic right now that they can have those all-in jumping kill. Yeah, lines. that's pretty much the gist of it. They want to get some vision control next to the lanes, make sure they don't get flanked, dodge the poke and try and push. They probably try to look, see how well they can push and how hard Fnatic is fighting back. If this proves to be impossible, uh, Fnatic having too much wave clear or too many pokes landing, they will need to start splitting and at least get those two outer turrets down because uh, it's really hard to uh, push into a poke comp because they know exactly you want to go for that tower. You're going to walk straight into it most of the time. Spears are coming from blind angles because you can place pink wards in the base. I don't actually see C9 breaking this. I think they're going for, for a three lane split push. Having the Sivir in the middle lane is good because Fnatic needs poke. Not necessarily have hard engage. If you get caught by a few spears, worst case you pop the Sivir ulti, disengage Kha'Zix. If he gets a 1v1 on the side, He's going to really be really strong in that. And Gragas can push the side lane as well. Well, now I'm sat outside the base of Fnatic here. Walls with that Banshee Veilon could take some poke. The Cyanide is going to get up there. Oh, the Strangle Thorn's coming down. And, well, no. That's <laughs> that didn't land. That didn't work out for them whatsoever. Lemonation with that black shield on him. Stay safe. Meanwhile, High was pushing down on the bottom lane. That is going to be that inner turret going down as well. The fifth of the game for Cloud9. See, High pushing down bottom lane was the trigger for that fight. Fnatic knew if they get split push, they will lose this game. They only have two carries. Imagine if this goes to a three lane split push. They can't spread out two carries in three lanes. Now that the disengage is down, or one of the disengages is down, C9 is going to be a lot more comfortable pushing this. They still have to be scared of the pokes. I can see High going down the bottom soon again to just try to split them up, and then they go for the tower push into the dive. Yeah, Balls being the only fat man on the team was the one that caught the spear, so he was the one that split off and did the damage, get the farm going, got himself an inner turret. This Baron buff has around about 90 seconds left on it, roughly. Meteos did just get caught out with that spear. Will that signal them to back off? No, it won't. It'll signal them to attack. They're going to go in. Cyanide does not get close enough to manage to get that Cyclone down, and everybody stands their ground, but Peke is almost out of mana now. The spears have got not much left to follow through, and you can see Fnatic fighting to the nail for this one, but Cloud9 are winning the battle of attrition. See, Cloud9 has to go here because the wave on their top lane is so big, they really want to go in. That's why they use the cast to disengage people, and they're desperately trying to get this tower, but I think they're getting a little bit too greedy, and Fnatic has held this push, and now Cloud9 has to go back to defend that top lane, and that's why I think Meteos should have maybe earlier went into the three lane push, because the same thing could have happened if even if Fnatic got caught, save ulti was enough to disengage. See, the recall's coming in. I, in particular, will go back there and say thank you very much for all that farm that's pushed up on towards his Sorry, A good two and a half, three waves there for the taking. Sneaky, meanwhile, does get himself the red buff. And he will be headed back home with, I'm guessing, a decent, yeah, 1,800 gold he has actually got to spend from this one. I'll see what he does decide to pick up. In the end, it's, it's Infinity Edge that is going to be finished off. So, yeah, he's definitely choosing damage because he's not really getting hit unless he mispositions. This is a poke comp. If, it hits, if it's ma magic damage hitting you, maybe a Banshee's Veil is better for you. At the same time, though, uh, he wants to get a lot of damage. Once they do catch somebody, blow him up immediately and go for it. Okay, get in his blue buff. Um, see, actually, Cloud9 moving again to push out these waves. The top is actually pushing back against Cloud9. We did see them clearing it out earlier on, but that's going to be coming straight back in at them. The Banshee's Veil has now been finished off for Cyanide on Wukong as well. 
Cloud9 still very, very cautious here about how they make their moves. In that push earlier on to this uh, middle in Invincitory, they actually only got half of his HP down. Yeah, and these turrets regen, so kind of need to be somewhat quick about it. Um, with only one and a minute half uh, on Baron, I don't think they should go for the tri lane push. Uh, they should probably want to lock up two lanes. They're going to have Gragas in the bottom up until Baron spawn or almost spawn, draw somebody from Fnatic down to the bottom, then back off into the Baron area, make sure you have a couple of sweepers ready and try and bait that. Or they can already send Gragas top to clean that. Um, yeah, I guess this is probably better on, on their end because they have to clean that wave. I hope Fnatic moves in right now and takes some vision in the Baron area at least. And Balls took too many spears. Simply put, they had no choice but to back off. Peke had managed to get himself out there, get that blue buff, keep those spears going down. Medios is actually taking the blue buff himself in his own jungle. Jungle so high. And he's shoving out that top wave, and we're going to get that reset position back towards the Dragon and Baron. So Fnatic gets a chance to clean bot lane before Baron spawns, and I think that's really good for them. They're putting a slow push there so that the wave starts pushing uh, up to the bottom lane. Look, they're not, probably not going to clean too much anymore. Uh, they want that bottom lane to push towards Cloud9, so they have something that forces them back. All Cloud9's pushes so far have been broken by by being locked into a time frame. They had to finish the push before the top lane actually got reached by the creeps, and that's Fnatic's doing that again. If bottom lane starts pushing again, uh, Cloud9 will have a time window, and Fnatic will know when Cloud9 is going to get desperate, because the time window is, is, is getting closer and closer to finishing. Half a minute until Baron does come back into play. Cloud9 already in position for that one. Cyanide is going to be the man that has a bit of a scout out and sees exactly what that scenario will be like. He'll start throwing the plants over the top as well. If they can actually walk out there safely. XPK going to be the man that's lobbing in those spears from as much of a distance as he possibly can. But Cloud9 have already started off the Baron. And Baron died so quick they can no longer push mid, so they have to try and get in vision from the sides. They have to fight this Baron, they have to fight this Baron dance. And we'll see whether it works out or not. That's the question. The spears are still coming in, but yet to find a home. Ace in the hole was used on high. They want to take that mid laner down as low as possible. Spear did land on Lemonation. They're going to push on towards Soas and Cyanide. They've separated them from the pack, and it may well work, but they've got good disengage. Fernando Soas is low. He's going to get taken down here. Is it going to be enough? Stranglebones comes out. Medios is separated. There's the Cyclone, but it's only the Guardian Angel that catch out, and that's going to be another kill for Cloud9. The others are trying to run. The spears on balls are simply not doing enough damage. Yellowstar having to flash away from that one and Cloud9 can just turn and go back to Baron. So first things first, Fnatic did not longer have the option to push mid because they can't push mid quick enough. That prevents Cloud9 from taking the Baron and just collapsing in their back. This forces Fnatic to come from the sides and get wards over. And this in turn allows Cloud9 to rush into one of the sides and punish people for being split from that team. Really good textbook play and really good reactions from both teams. And that will be the Baron going over towards Cloud9. A 12,000 gold that they're now sitting on. Oh, a 12,000 gold lead that they're sitting on. You can see 2,000 for Sneaky on Sivir. Having a fantastic second game this time around as we are going to see the Talisman pop also used there by Yellow Star. And he actually gets a good grasping route up, but looks like they're going to lose this tower. Well, they're going to try and siege it up. The spawns are coming up for Cyanide and Soaz, but it's a little bit too late. They have gone deep on towards this one. Explosive cast. Whoa! Oh, my God. Reckless just Holy got crap. destroyed. Soaz comes in and almost dies the moment he gets close there. Soaz, sneaky down the side there. High taking his spear from Peke, but quickly returns fire with a barrel of his own. Cloud9 do disengage, but they got the in hit. High is playing so well this tournament. He just played pinball with Reckles. Ulti into a barrel that was always existent there. This is one of the fancy Gragas plays you will try and solo queue to outplay your opponents. Reckles, he got bumped away. Reckles didn't flash because he knew I will survive this damage, but he didn't see the other barrel that was already lying there from Gragas, and he just got super outplayed by High. What an amazing play. This is so good. Joe's watching it back again on replays. <laughs> he enjoyed it so it's, much. It's a re pretty ridiculous play there, and you have to be pretty accurate with that Gragas barrel to uh, pull off those kind of things, but that's the, how this game's going for Cloud9 at the minute. 17 to 10 up in kills, almost a 15,000 gold lead is what they have. And obviously, that inhibitor did go down the last time around. So, what's next for Cloud9? Are they going to be pushing those other lanes out, or are they quite happy to maybe try for a fight here? And there is that barrel. Sick. Yeah, pinball. Look, pop and pop. And there's nothing you can do. I don't think he even uses barrier because 
One, it wasn't enough, and he just got outplayed. He got red like the book there. But the bigger play almost there is C9's time management. You saw them almost seemingly random pop a silver ulti in the middle because they knew they had 10 seconds left on the spawns, which was enough to take the tower and take the inhibitor such a low HP that Fnatic really couldn't outpoke them anymore and they would get that inhibitor for free. Right now, we asked what the plan is. I think CD9 doesn't care. They, they can split push, it could work. They can five man push, it'll probably also work. The gold lead is just too too big for Fnatic to overcome and, and C9 is looking confident. You know, after you pull off that play, you're gonna get confident into this push. They just don't have to overreach, but I don't I think they can't really kill Sneaky in time anymore. High has too much damage, Medius has too much damage, and Balls is too tanky. But for me, I'd have to look back right at the start. The picks and ban phase. They decided on this pick comp strategy, the the spears, the poke. But Fnatic have not been winning lane phases. So why would you put yourself in that position in the first place? Because well Cloud9 clearly knew what was coming. Lemonation's Book of Wonder showed him exactly what they were gonna play and counted into it and wrecked us again. So, so low. Cloud9 just gonna push through for the win here. Yeah, it doesn't even face Cloud9. Sure, Reckless gets a base there. And uh, ultimate ability has been used, though. Explosive Cross is no longer available. They're still having a hard time pushing this. Uh, they could eventually get this. Split push would probably speed up the process, open up the map. Uh, I think it's too late for somebody to cross over now. They're just gonna get the super creeps going in the mid. When somebody defends those, try and whittle down that tower over time. Um, to touch the topic of compositions, I think it almost worked for Fnatic. We saw some good highlights of what the composition is capable of. If the enemy team reads that though and plays their composition well, which Cloud9 did, uh, they fixed their mistakes from the previous game because splitting against a Pokemon would have been detrimental to them, but they fixed that and now they're sieging. I just wish one day Peke would follow up those grasping roots with a spear <laughs> because he hasn't been doing the yellow. So I was like, I can't do much more. I'm catching the opponent. You're not following it through. They don't seem to be going onto it. They are keeping them at bay here. Here's the balls, balls once again going big, going deep. Peke getting away from that explosive cast this time around. Lemonation comes and gets that ultimate running. Will go down in the process here. They get themselves the inhibitor to but Fnatic can can't turn this. It. Can they can't turn it? Reckless have to run away though. Medios jumping on. Yellow Star's trying to get away from this one. He's going to get caught out. He's going to jump back on towards Cyrus. Gets himself the double. Ace and the Hulk comes back on through there. Gets himself the triple. No! It's going to be sneaky that gets the shutdown. Becca goes in towards him. And this is going to be Cloud9 taking victory as they push down the Nexus turrets. Really, really strong performance. Brings them all level in this best of three. And there's another kill in the end for High. All the Fnatic are down. We're all tied up and we're going into the final game of the best of three to decide who goes through to the grand final of the Intel Extreme Masters World Championship. I don't think there's any better story coming out of here. Europe on a performing day one. America showing up. Then Fnatic playing really well today, winning convincingly first game. Cloud9 immediately fixing their mistakes. Both teams are very resilient, both in their play and strategy. And I just.